this computer array here looks rather complex, and indeed it is rather complex. Uh, we have a, a computer that collects the data from the, the CT scanner. The next computer that I use to correlate with diagnostic CT scans on the PAX system. That's the digital uh, x-ray system for Blue Ridge Healthcare so that I can actually see the x-rays that have been done previously side by side with our new our new CT scans and then we have a scheduling computer and over here the computer that goes with our CT scanner itself a dual console computer that that can give us a lot of information and a lot of fine detail on the CT scans that we obtain. Behind us here in the in this uh, room you will see a view box. This is an antique. It's not truly what might be considered an antique but this is where I used to hang x-rays up on the board and uh, about uh, five years ago I hung the last x-rays on this view box and the only reason we use this view box now is to provide a little extra light for the room when we need it. Less than a year ago, we completed the installation of our uh, newest linear accelerator. Uh, this accelerator is as advanced as our older uh, accelerator. They're, they're almost equivalent. They're both uh, basically top of the line and have the ability to utilize multiple interlocking leaves. We call that a multi-leaf collimator to shape the field of radiation. There was a time that we had to pour blocks out of uh, a molten metal and, and create these blocks for every patient that we wanted to shape the field. Now we are able to, on the computer, draw what we want as far as a shaped field and then create that in the machine with these interlocking leaves. The leaves are actually rather thick. Those leaves are about this thick. Each patient is treated in such a way that these leaves change uh, in between the fields that are treated. And there are specialized techniques that we utilize that while the machine is on and the treatment is being given, the leaves may move at the time of the treatment. This approach is called intensity modulated radiation therapy. It is not appropriate for every type of malignancy because it is generally when we are focusing on a rather small target volume. There are situations that we're trying to treat a larger area, a field of risk, rather than an isolated small area. But when we are looking at treating a very small area, this new technique is outstanding at achieving a high dose to the target volume while keeping the dose to the nearby critical structures as we call them or sensitive tissues keeping that to a very low dose. This is a typical linear accelerator. It's actually set up right now uh, in a fashion that it is prepared for the morning checkouts or the morning verifications. Each day we check the field of radiation to verify that the machine is uh, directing its beam to exactly what we know that it's supposed to be doing. Uh, it goes through even more checks every week and other checks every month and then there are annual uh, checks for the machine that are even more intense. Uh, these are generally done by our medical physicists but the daily checks are done by the therapists, the uh, persons in the department that actually give the treatment every day. The radiation oncology department cannot function without a team approach. Uh, from the front desk, the, the, the ladies that, that meet our patients in the front and help direct the flow of traffic, make sure that the scheduling is done and make sure that we have everything that we need on the chart, all the way to the housekeepers that, that could, will come in here in just a few minutes and make sure that the remains of the day are cleaned up so that we're prepared to start tomorrow. All of that is so important for making this uh, entire operation happen. As I frequently tell patients during consult, I'm only the foreman. You'll meet the rest of my team. And one of the most important parts of that team will be the therapist. We have several therapists on staff and uh, they, the patients will tend to meet nearly all of the therapists during the course of their treatment as the therapists do have some rotation from machine to, to machine. This particular linear accelerator 
is utilized for a certain series of our treatments and uh, we can see by looking towards the uh, internal workings of this. The radiation comes out of this head of the machine. The radiation is produced back here in the body of the machine by an electron gun that propagates electrons down a vacuum tube utilizing radio frequency waves and the, uh, the electrons go through a bending magnet and strike a target and create x-rays, very high energy x-rays. Over here on this wall on the far side, you will, you will see that with the, if the head of this machine is rotated completely 180 degrees, it will be aimed at that wall. Well, on the other side of that wall is the parking lot. One thing we don't want to do is radiate people in the parking lot. That wall is 96 inches thick of high density concrete, steel reinforced high density concrete. The radiation won't go through that, but that's a lot of high density concrete. The thinner walls are only 43 inches thick. The rooms that we give the radiation in, uh, as we've already commented, have very thick concrete walls, but of course we have to be able to come and go. This area is called the maze. The machine is around a corner from us right now, and so there's the linear accelerator, and as you can see, the direct beam from the accelerator does not go out towards the door, obviously, but there is a maze and that keeps any radiation from going out the door because radiation doesn't go around bins and there's enough concrete in the walls to stop it. But in the course of radiation, there is another form of radiation produced called neutrons. Well, we try to limit the neutron production and that's very complex and we can't go into too much detail on that right now, but what is interesting is the neutrons bounce. The neutrons can actually bounce off the walls. They can bounce into the maze. So we have a special door to stop the neutrons. This really is not designed to stop x-rays as I've explained. This door is really not solid lead. It's not even solid metal, although this is a thick metal sheet that it's uh, surrounding. Inside this is a uh, a type of thick plastic impregnated with boron. The boron captures the neutrons because of its, uh, the way it interacts with this atomic particle. And so the neutrons can't get out through the door. This door is extremely heavy. Uh, I believe that I've been told that they are somewhere around 25 hundred pounds a piece or something like that. They're, they're, they're unbelievably heavy. There's a large metal frame and the doors are operated by a, an electrical uh, mechanical uh, operator. There are emergency ways to open this if a problem arises.